In this video, we're going to explain how the light intensity affects the rate of photosynthesis in algal balls. You'll firstly set up a lamp as your light source. You'll then place a meter ruler away from the light source. You then place a beaker directly in front of the light source. You then fill that beaker with cold water. I will explain the function of the beaker later. And now we're going to prepare the contents of the clear flasks for the investigation. We place the clear flasks at equal distances away from the light source. In this case, I have put them every 20 centimeters away from the light source. You now need to fill each flask with the same number of algal balls. This is a control variable so that your results can be comparable. As you can see here, in the first, second and fourth flask, there are the same number of algal balls. However, the student made a mistake and put in too many algal balls in the third flask away from the light source. We're going to see the effect of this later. We now need to add the same volume of hydrogen carbonate indicator into each flask. It must be the same volume. This is a control variable to make your results reliable. The same volume, not amount, but the same volume of hydrogen carbonate indicator is added to the first three flasks. In the fourth flask, the student makes a mistake, whereby the student adds less volume of hydrogen carbonate indicator. This could mean that the results are not going to be comparable. And then you put the lids on the flasks. We now set up the control. This is not a control variable, but it is called a control. So we set up the flask as all the other ones. So as you can see here, we put in the same number of algal balls, which in this case is 12 algal balls. And then we must put in the same volume, not amount, but volume of hydrogen carbonate indicator into the flask. We are testing the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. So in this flask here, we are testing what happens if there is no light. So we cover the flask with tin foil to cover the flask with tin foil to prevent light entering the flask. Let's now go through what the variables are in this investigation. The independent variable, the independent variable is what we change. So in this case, what we change is the light intensity. So our light source, the lamp, emits light. So the light intensity is going to be highest in the flasks closest to the lamp, as you can see here. And the further away you go from the light source, the lower the light intensity. So the light intensity decreases the further you are away from the light source. If the control flask wasn't covered in tin foil as shown here, light would hit the algal balls and they would photosynthesize. But what happens is that we cover it with a tin foil. Therefore, the light does not hit the algal balls and no photosynthesis should take place in that flask. So the flask closest to the light source is where you'll find the highest light intensity. And the flask furthest away from the light source is where you'll find the lowest light intensity. We've talked about our independent variable, what we change, but what is it that we measure? This is our dependent variable. Your dependent variable is what you measure. So what we're going to measure is going to be the change in color of the hydrogen carbonate indicator. So we're going to measure the change in color of the hydrogen carbonate indicator. So remember the dependent variable is what you measure. We're now going to look at the hydrogen carbonate indicator and how it's used to measure rates of photosynthesis. Hydrogen carbonate indicator is sensitive to carbon dioxide. So when hydrogen carbonate indicator is just sat in a room in atmospheric concentration of CO2 levels, it is going to remain a red color. Now, if you lower the CO2 levels in the hydrogen carbonate indicator, so if you have lower carbon dioxide levels, you will see a color change from red to a pinky purple color, slightly like magenta. And if you lower the concentration of CO2 in the indicator once more, you'll see another color change, this time going from a pinky magenta color to a deep bluey purple. But what happens if we increase carbon dioxide levels inside the hydrogen carbonate indicator? Well, that means that the color change will be red to orange. So if you increase CO2 in the hydrogen carbonate indicator, it will go from a red to orange color. 
And if you have really high levels of carbon dioxide in the hydrogen carbonate indicator, it will turn to a yellow color. So really high levels of CO2 in hydrogen carbonate indicator will be shown by a color change to yellow. So remember, hydrogen carbonate indicator will be red in atmospheric CO2 levels. And if you decrease carbon dioxide concentration in hydrogen carbonate indicator, it will turn a purpley pink color. Decrease the carbon dioxide levels further and it will turn a purple blue color. If you increase the CO2 concentration in hydrogen carbonate indicator, as you can see here, it will go from red to an orange color. And if you increase the carbon dioxide concentration in the hydrogen carbonate indicator even further, it will turn a yellow color. So we're now going to look at the flask closest to the light. Where there is a higher light intensity, you're going to have a higher rate of photosynthesis. That means that the algal balls are going to absorb more carbon dioxide from the flask solution into the algal balls. That means they're going to decrease the carbon dioxide in the solution, which means that the indicator should turn a darker purple. This is because there is a higher rate of photosynthesis, which leads to an increased absorption of carbon dioxide into the algal balls, lowering the carbon dioxide in the hydrogen carbonate solution. In the next flask, there's going to be a lower rate of photosynthesis, which means that carbon dioxide is not absorbed by the algal balls as quickly, which means that there's going to be a higher volume of carbon dioxide still in the indicator solution than in the flask closest to the light source. So the color change will be from red to a pinky magenta color. In this part of the video, we're actually going to ignore the fact there are more algal balls in this flask. We're going to cover that later in the video. So because this flask is further away from the light source, the light intensity on the algal balls will be lower. Therefore, the rate of photosynthesis will be lower. Therefore, they're going to absorb less carbon dioxide from the solution. That means that the hydrogen carbonate indicator will not turn as magenta as the one to its left. It will stay a really dark, deep red color. And in the flask furthest away from the light source, where there is the lowest light intensity, you're going to find the lowest rate of photosynthesis. And therefore, you're going to find the lowest color change from red. So now we're going to see what's happened in the control, where there has been no light. So inside this flask here, there's been no photosynthesis. Instead, it has been respiration that's been taking place because there's been no light for photosynthesis. So the plant will undergo respiration. That means that it's going to absorb the oxygen from the solution and it's going to put more carbon dioxide into the solution, turning the hydrogen carbonate indicator yellow. So as you increase the light intensity, you increase the rate of photosynthesis. And then as you increase the rate of photosynthesis, you increase the rate of carbon dioxide absorption by the algal balls. This then lowers the carbon dioxide concentration in the hydrogen carbonate solution, which will cause you to see a color change of red to purple, whereby purple shows a low carbon dioxide concentration in the indicator. So in the highest light intensity flask, you'll see a color change of red to purple. If you decrease the light intensity, you'll see a color change of red to pink. It's really important to keep the number of algal balls the same because as you can see in this one here, we've got many algal balls. That means you're going to increase the rate of photosynthesis and that will negate any effect that a low light intensity will have on this flask. That will mean that there'll be a color change of red to a dark purple. This leads to results that are not comparable and they are not reliable results. So they are not comparable results. And in the control flask, you're going to have a color change of red to yellow. This is because photosynthesis did not take place and instead respiration took place, which meant that oxygen is going to be used up and carbon dioxide put into the solution, which will turn the indicator a yellow color. To keep the temperature as similar as possible in each flask, we put a clear beaker of water in front of the light source. This means that it absorbs the heat. It absorbs the heat from the light, but it will still allow light through because water is transparent. 
this means that heat is controlled and is a control variable because temperature will affect the rate of photosynthesis in each flask. So in the control, you set up the equipment as you normally would. Same volume of hydrogen carbonate indicator, the same flask and the same number of algal balls. But you cover it with silver foil. This is so the light is reflected away from the flask and does not go through the silver foil so photosynthesis does not take place. Because if there's no light, there is no photosynthesis. So respiration happens instead, whereby glucose and oxygen react to form carbon dioxide and water. This leads to an increased carbon dioxide concentration in the hydrogen carbonate solution, which means that there is a color change of red to yellow, as more CO2 is released by the algal balls into the solution. This proves that it is light that affects the rate of photosynthesis. The control showed that if there is no light, photosynthesis doesn't happen. So what are the control variables? Variables we must control to make our results reliable and comparable between one another. So firstly, we must control the temperature. We control the temperature by using a beaker of water to absorb the heat from the light. So the beaker of water is in front of the light source and it absorbs the heat from the light but allows the light through because it's transparent, keeping the temperature in each of the flasks approximately the same. You must place the same number of algal balls into each flask. Using different numbers of algal balls would change the rate of photosynthesis in each flask. That would mean that the results would not be comparable. And you must use the same volume of hydrogen carbonate indicator. You do not write amount. This is the same volume of hydrogen carbonate indicator. Because using different volumes of indicator would affect the dependent variable. We would not be able to measure the rate of photosynthesis. We use control variables to make the results comparable and reliable. Do not write to make a fair test. That's zero marks automatically.